Hello students, uh, in continuation uh, to our uh, lectures on uh, uh, Grashof law, today I will uh, try to give uh, one more beautiful application of uh, four bar linkage. We know that in the last class that is in second class we have seen inversions of uh, four bar chain. In uh, one of the cases we have seen that uh, if the link adjacent to I repeat, if the link adjacent to shortest link, this is the short, shortest link and these two are rotatable joints, completely rotatable joints. You just observe here, please see this, this joint, look at, it is rotating completely and if you observe this joint also, this is also rotating completely, this is also rotating completely. These two are, uh, these two are completely rotatable joints, these two are completely rotatable joints, wonderful. Now, what we do is, you may be thinking, sir, every time you are bringing this only and what is this? Great. Today I have brought something great for you. Today I brought something great for you, something great for you. Let's try to enjoy this. And we mechanical engineers try to utilize every single concept. Try to utilize every single concept and we try to put it under practical use. So you know that when the link adjacent to the shortest link is fixed, for example, this is the shortest link. If the adjacent link, it may be this or this. This is the shortest link. This is adjacent link. This is adjacent link. Let us fix this. If I fix this and you know where I'm fixing this. And please note on that this is mounted on. Please understand this white one is this white one is the shortest link. And this is rotatable joint, completely rotatable. And this is completely rotatable joint. Now, let us fix this. What is this link? It is adjacent to the shortest link. This is shortest link. This is adjacent to the shortest link. So, this is completely rotatable and this is not completely rotatable. Let us fix this. If you observe this, please understand carefully. What is happening? This is completely rotating. This white link which is crank and this is crank and rocker mechanism. So, now the most important thing is why are we talking every time about uh, like every time about crank 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 the reason is the input is given generally i'm using the word generally be cautious the input is given generally to the motor so from the motor it is connected to the shaft dekho so what is the meaning of this? Because the motor shaft rotates continuously. So the input is given to the crank continuously. That is the reason I want one of the joints to rotate completely. It is a grash of chain. So now, so let us assume that I'm fixing this. What is this? This is shortest link adjacent to shortest link. I'm fixing this. So if input is given, so let us say this is motor. So this, this is connected. This is, this is connected. This rotatable joint, it is connected to the motor shaft. This is connected to the motor shaft. So motor is giving input. So the shaft is rotating. So when the shaft is rotating and this is, this is rotating continuously. So when the input is given to this, this crank, when the input is given, this will rotate continuously. So when this is rotating continuously and observe, this is coupler and this is, this is fixed and thereby, so if this is fixed and if this crank is rotating completely and this is rocking, this is rocking. And you know, my dear students, windshield wiper mechanism, car wiper mechanism is based on this only. The beautiful application of a four bar chain. We, are, we have so many applications, practical applications of four bar chain. Let us see this. Look at my dear students. Let me show you uh, this in a practical manner. Observe here, please observe here. So this, this brown link is the shortest link. This is, let me show you, this is the shortest link and this is adjacent to the shortest link. Whenever adjacent to the shortest link is fixed, you will get what, if input is given to this, it will be crank because this is completely rotatable joint and this is not completely rotatable because this is not mounted on the shortest link. So when this is rotating, observe here, the, here actually this is connected to the motor shaft and that motor is coupled to the battery of a car. When the motor is coupled to the battery of a car, the battery will supply energy to the motor and motor shaft rotates and that is connected to this and this will rotate completely. When this is rotating completely, see, and this is just rocking. This is just rocking and see, thereby, if this is the glass, if this is the glass of the car, what is happening? Now, if the input is given to the motor, the motor input is continuous, the shaft rotates continuously. When the shaft is rotating continuously, the, uh, the crank is rotating. When this is rotating and you know, it is just rocking, it is just rocking and thereby, whenever you are going on a rainy day and please try to remember the four bar mechanism 
please try to remember the four bar chain please try to remember grash of linkage please remember this so therefore when the input is given to this when the input is given to this this will rotate continuously and thereby it just uh, you know it rocks and thereby it cleans the glass and thereby you can enjoy your ride happily happily now the next question is so therefore windshield wiper mechanism is a four is an inversion of four bar chain with what what is uh, that uh, windshield wiper mechanism it is a crank rocker mechanism because the input is given to the crank this is the crank the input is given to the crank and this is rocking this is rocking this is rocking absolutely wonderful absolutely wonderful now my question to you people is do we give input always to crank so are we giving input always to the crank if you think if you think yes sir because motor rotates continuously motor cannot make 160 degree rotation and come back no the shaft makes complete rotation of the motor so therefore generally the input is i use the word generally it is given to the motor shaft now can there be so i, I want to analyze completely so here the input is given to the motor so therefore this crank is rotating completely so input is given to this crank and output is this rocking output is output is given to this rocking this is rocking you just see the input this is connected to the motor and motor is rotating completely so therefore now the shaft is rotating completely therefore this is the output output is rocking output is oscillating motion input is complete rotation crank now i have a question will can we give input to rocker have you ever seen Sieving machine, manual sieving machine. I have seen, sirs. So, jab up with pedal, with pedal. When you just press like this, it is rocking. When it is rocking, and you will get the output as rotation. So, it's like this. So, in case of sieving machine, in case of sieving machine, my dear students, please observe here. In case of sieving machine, what we do is we give input to this rocker. So, the input is given to the rocker. When the input is given to the rocker and the crank rotates thereby output is we have actually a thread wound so we have a uh, uh, like something like uh, on the pulley we have a wire uh, the rope wound so that will make complete rotation so in sieving machine the input is given to rocker and output is obtained as uh, complete rotation so hope you loved this beautiful applications of four bar chain thank you my dear students i'll come up with a beautiful concept next next video will be on thermal and most probably you'll be seeing practically certain things thank you my dear students god bless you